Hey everybody, Dr. Dave Marquis here with a message that I wanted to share with you regarding recovering. There's been a number of patients, ever-growing number of patients, sadly, that are struggling, whether it be recovering from post-COVID or many people actually after getting vaccinated, they, they have some struggles. and um, They all seem to be surrounding that aspect that I commonly talk about relative to inflammation. And if you've watched any of my videos in the past relative to inflammation, you know that that's kind of what we focus on because if you can reduce inflammation being the ubiquitous common symptom associated with all disease, if you can reduce that, your potential for vitality just goes through the roof. So some of the things that we're seeing in both of those camps are really concerning neurologically. And there's been a lot of literature supporting the evidence that post-COVID is affecting people neurologically as well as vascularly. And sadly, many people on the vaccine side seem to be experiencing similar symptoms. Not everyone, but it seems to be popping up in, in both populations. So understanding what you can do about minimizing your inflammation has a lot of value. I'm not purporting or professing any type of cure here. Um, just that if you can understand inflammation and address it as efficiently as possible, you have a good chance of reducing many of your symptoms and potentially coming out on the other side doing really well. So here's some of the things that I have talked about previously that I'm just going to encapsulate here in this talk. And, and hopefully you'll be able to find a few of those nuggets being useful for you. I've talked about N-acetylcysteine quite a bit. It's a precursor to glutathione. And as you may be remembering from some of my past videos, glutathione is made in your liver. It's recycled in your intestines. It's your body's number one anti-inflammatory. Those two things together, N-acetylcysteine and glutathione, they're a blockbuster team to help reduce systemic inflammation, mucus buildup, inflammation in the airways, as well as binding anything that might be in the circulatory system that you don't want there. And relative to that, that's what we're actually tracking. When we're seeing these patients, we're working with their blood labs so that we can identify some of these inflammatory markers. So there's some pretty good tests for some of the things that you can see. Uh, in terms of numerical values, but interestingly, there's other labs that you can actually see things in, in people's blood. So that, that might be something that a patient would want to look at and see, okay, do I have any of these markers or reason for concern? I encourage people to, you know, go into their health knowing, gather data on yourself. So you got N-acetylcysteine, glutathione. I also like to use some of the binding agents. There's a great one called Pectisol, which is basically a citrus pectin and it has the capacity to adsorb junk. It, it can bind things and help to remove it from the system once you've got something else that has tagged it, like NAC or glutathione. There's also black seed oil, which has shown to be very beneficial specifically for COVID. And there's also the benefit of getting into infrared saunas. Now, this is a, an interesting one because the, the infection that we've been talking about so much has to do with a, a virus-like thing that has multiple properties, even prion-like properties. And what we know is that when the body gets to a certain degree of temperature, that you can actually start to denature some of these things. And so getting into an infrared sauna does two things for you. It helps to actually reduce viral load of all sorts of infections and things that the body might be harboring unknowing to you. And it also helps to upregulate your mitochondrial output of ATP. Now that was a big sentence. Your mitochondria, just think of those guys as the energy storehouse of every cell in the body. And anyone who's suffering from long symptoms knows that fatigue is an issue. And fatigue follows dysfunctional mitochondria and inflammation and poor vasculature. So if you could address all three of those things, don't you think that would be beneficial? Well, that, that's what we're doing with patients and we're, we're generally seeing good results. 
and everyone's unique, everyone's different, and so it's not a recipe for a cure for anybody, but those are all safe things that people can look at and say, okay, you know what, I'm gonna get my labs done just to see if I have some of these inflammatory markers, and then I might be able to tap into the use of some of these things, NAC, glutathione, pectisol, black seed oil, and infrared sauna. Now that infrared sauna kind of has to get hot. Yeah, so you want to set the thing for around 170 degrees and you don't want to stay in there for long. It's like 15 to 20 minutes and then get out. But having your body get exposed to that heat causes your body to release its own protein called heat shock protein. And that can actually help you to denature junk. And then if you have those other things in the system, it can bind the junk and pull it out. Rinse, wash, repeat. You do that day after day after day, and slowly you actually start to recalibrate your immune response and lower your inflammatory load. Hope this is a helpful tip. I encourage you to know yourself, know your health, know your status, and if you're not feeling as chipper or as energetic as you were a year ago, look at these things. Find out if, if you need to address them. Be well and have a great day.